And here we are again learning how to read and write Hebrew. In previous lessons, we learned the vowels and we learned several letters. Let's go over it real quick again. The vowels are so important because when you know the vowels and you know the letters, you can read Hebrew. So let's go over the, the vowels real quick again. Here is the first one, is an A ah vowel. Uh, when you have a horizontal line underneath the letter, that will give you an A ah sound. When you have two dots or three dots under a letter, that gives you an A sound. When you have um, a dot underneath the letter and a yud next to it, that's an E sound. Now, what is a yud? A yud is the smallest letter of the alphabet the Hebrew alphabet, and when we use it occasionally for um, grammatic, is a grammatical helper, and the yud is the tenth letter of the alphabet. So you see a yud next to a letter and a dot underneath, that's an E sound. The O sound is created by putting a dot on top of a letter, and sometimes you'll see the letter vav, which is the sixth letter of the alphabet and you'll see it next to a letter with a dot on top, that's an O sound. An O sound is accomplished by either a three diagonal dots underneath a letter, or a letter and a vav, which is the sixth letter of the alphabet, and we use it as a helper here. You have a letter and a vav and a dot in the middle of the vav. So it's an O sound. And, of course, the last is the U. Uh, a short sound like in bug or something like that. So we learn those letters. We have the aleph, bet. When it gets a dot inside, it, it, the dot is called a dagesh, and that dot makes it a B sound. Otherwise, it's a V sound, vet. So you have aleph, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, vav, Zain, Het. And Het is that letter with the guttural sound that we don't have in English. Let me show you the letters again, introduce you again to the letters just so we can start fresh. This is how the letters are read, and um, we sing them in a little melody. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He, He, Vav, Zain, Het. Tet yud kaf, lamed mem nun samech ayin peh, tzadik kuf, resh, shin, and taf. Those are the 22 Hebrew letters and the six vowels. You put those two together and you can read Hebrew. So let's do some exercises. The letter I want to talk about today is the ninth letter of the alphabet, and it's called tet. It's the sound of T, and it's drawn like this. You start at the top, go down, start at the top again, and come down again. You meet that line. This is your tet. And you'll see a different variation of the letter tet, like in all of the other, other letters. You have to remember that what we're doing here, we are using what we call stick letters. We, we just draw the lines. But the letters in print will be a little bit more elaborate, and um, I can take you back to the string of letters and show you the difference. Here is the letter tet, the way you will see it in print. In the Aleph Bet book that we're using for this class, we have the letter tet and how to do it stroke by stroke. So you can look at it and see those of you who has the book, have the book. So you, or you can look on the screen and see how to do the letter tet. Back to the board. The, the letter tet is the ninth letter. of the alphabet. And um, the, cons the graphical construction of the letter, it looks something like this. Uh, 
Okay? And what it does, it's, it reminds us of a person who is um, bent before the one. It shows humility. So the letter tet represents that humility. And of course, you know, we have people that we're referred to, referred to as um, kind people in the, in the Bible. Moses was the humblest person. So the letter tet represents that kind of humility before the one. And uh, the first letter in the Bible that started with the letter tet is the word tov. And tov means good. So in Genesis, in the beginning, God created things, and then he saw that it was tov, that it was good. And let's do some reading uh, with, with the letter tet. We have tet, vav, bet. The letter, t the letter tet and a vav and a dot on top, right from here, this combination, it's a to. And the letter bet without the dot in the middle is a V sound, not a B sound. So we read it tov. Tov, that means good. We have another word that is representing purity, and that is tahor. So we have tet, hey, vav, and the letter resh, which we haven't learned yet. That's at the end of the string of letters of the Hebrew uh, letters. And the way you read it is tet, with an ah sound, taken right from here. Tet with an ah sound, it's ta. Then we have a he and a vav and a dot on top. That combination comes from here. And it's ho, because it's a he and a vav and a dot on top. Ta, ho, and a resh, tahor. Tahor means pure, something that is completely pure. So, transliterated as ta taho, and that means pure. Another word I can construct from tet would be. The way it's read is chet with an A sound, he, and then a tet with an E sound. And the aleph, as you can see at the end of the word, it is not voweled. So it doesn't have a sound. It's a little helper, grammatical helper. So we read it chet. Chet in Hebrew is a sin. So just for the exercise. Don't do it. <laughs> um, another het and tet combination is hat. Here is the het with an a sound and a tet next to it. That happened to be ivory or the long tooth of an elephant. So you can see that I'm just using words that we can utilize in the letters that we already learned. Uh, here is another word. The word is Bet with an A sound, right from here. Be, and then we have a tet with an A sound. And a het, betah. 
Betach is confidence or um, trust. And we say Betach Ba'adonai, Betach Bashem. And um, that means I have trust in the Lord. So this is the word Betach and um, that's what it represents. We're using the tet and the het, those two letters next to each other. The next letter I want to talk about is the letter Yud. On the string of letters, this is the tenth letter of the alphabet, right here. And as I mentioned before, the Yud is the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet, alphabet and it represents another characteristic of God, which is the infinity, because it looks like a little dot. And what it looks like also is like a person that is praying. Graphically, if you look at it, the letter Yud is made of two points and a middle. So it's a person that is praying and he's connecting with his prayer. His prayer is connecting the heavens, the up upwards, and the ground that his feet, feet are on. So his prayer is connecting between the heavens and the earth. And um, that is the, the letter Yud representing that infinity of, of God, that aspect of God. So the letter Yud is used in that combination of four letters that we occasionally use as helpers, as grammatical helpers. And th those four letters, we mentioned them before, is Aleph. The letters are Aleph. Hey, Vav, and a Yud. And we do a little tag on top just to remind us that this is not a word. This is just a combination of letters that when they appear in a word without a vowel, they will be silent. You will not hear them. If they do have a vowel, then that means that they have a sound and they will be heard. So the, we call those the Ahoy letters. Why Ahoy? Because we have the Aleph, the He, the Vav, and the Yud. If it was a word, that could be read Ahoy. But it's not a word. So we just use it to remind us, ourselves. And um, the letter Yud is small. And it's a little reminder to us that small is beautiful. Small is good. God chose in many ways to remind us that having to do with less is better. We have um, the Torah was given on a small mountain. It could have been given on something impressive and huge and big, but it was given on a small, um, obscure mountain. Um, we have... Um, a person like Moses was very humble. So those traits are very important to God. And the letter Yud represent that. Some words that can be written with the Yud, uh, as, as I mentioned here, the Yud is used as a grammatical helper. So you'll find it in... Every time, almost, that we have an E sound, you'll find the Yud. So you, the Yud is used over and over again in many, many ways. Um, here is the name of the letter is Yud. I need to watch myself because I started writing in cursive. So the letter Yud, here is... We have a yud with a vav next to it and a dot in the middle. That is this combination. It's u. In this case, the yud is the letter. The vav is the helper. 
and it's a U sound, and then the letter Dalit, Yud. That is the name of the letter. It comes from Yad. Yad is a hand in Hebrew. So the letter Yud with an A sound next to a Dalit. That gives you Yad, which is a hand. Then we have, a, we have words like, everybody knows these words, so let's use them. Okay, the word is yud with an uh sound, ye, he, and a vav, and a dot in the middle. Comes right from here. It's an u sound, yehu. And then we have a dalet, a dot underneath, and a yud next to it. It's an e sound. So we, we read it ye, hu, di. And it's transliterated like this. Yehudi means Jewish. Now let's figure it out. Why is Yehudi Jewish? Because it comes from a word that is this. What do we have here? We have a yud with an uh sound, ye, a he and a vav and a dot in the middle, u sound, ye, hu. Then we have a dalet with an a sound. Dalet with an a sound is da. And of course, the he has no vowel and it's silent. So we have ye, hu, da. Transliterated this way. And that is the name for the tribe of Judah. So the tribe of Judah was the only survival of the attack of the Babylonians, of, of the Assyrians, who wiped out the north of Israel, the ten tribes. So the ten tribes were wiped out by the Assyrians. They took them to exile and spread them around the world. This is why we have the mystery of the ten lost tribes of Israel. We don't know where they are. Some people say they do. But this, this was uh, at the time that that would happen. The tribe of Judah was left in Judea, in Jerusalem, in, in that area. And... Then the Babylonians came and took Judah to exile, to Babylon. Then 70 years later, Cyrus, the king of Persia, took over the Babylonians, won the war against them, took them over, and allowed the Jews to go back to Jerusalem and build the second temple. The Babylonians destroyed the first one, and then the second temple was built 70 years later, was allowed to be built again by the, the Persians this time, King Cyrus. So we are today probably, if we are Jewish, then we are probably descendants of Judah, of the tribe of Judah. And that's why we are called Yehudim or Yehudi, and the tribe was Yehuda. So this is why, and of course, when this was translated or, or uh, transposed to English, then the, the Yud became a J for ease of uh, speaking, and uh, we ended up with J, Jewish, instead of Yehudi or Yehuda. So a feminine, by the way, feminine name of this will be Yehudit. What we have is the yud with an er sound, 
He and a Vav and a dot in the middle, U, Dalet and a Yud and a dot underneath, that's an E sound, Yehu, D, and a, the, the letter Tav, which is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So Yehudit was, um, it's a feminine name for Yehudi, for Jewish, and um, it's also a name that it ended up in English as Judith. So that's how the Hebrew um, name is written. Let's try another word. We have a Dalet and a Yud and a Gimel next to it. Dalet and a Yud, Dalet and an A sound taken right from here. That's a Da. Then we have a Yud. In this case, in this case, the Yud has an A sound, and uh, it's a full-pledged um, consonant. It's a, it's a Yud with a, a vowel, and it's a consonant. Um, so the Yud would be Ya, and then a Gimel next to it. A Gimel, the third letter of the alphabet. So we have Da Yag. Da Yag happened to be a fisherman in Hebrew. As, as much as Dag, Dalet and an A sound and a Gimel next to it, that's a fish. So Dag is a fish and Da Yag would be a fisherman who deals with the Dag. Um, let's use another word that will utilize some of more of the letters. Let's see. Here is a word. We have a chet, the eighth letter, chet, with an a sound, ha. Then we have a vet, because it doesn't have a dot to make it a bet. Um, we have a vet with an a sound, va. And then we have a tet with an a sound, ha, va, ta. Ha, va, ta is a strike, a hit, if I hit somebody, ha, va, ta. Okay. Another word is here. Just a transliteration to help you a little. Here is another word. Here is the bet and a yud. This is a real bet because it has a dot in the middle. And it's a B sound with an E sound right from here. So it's B. Then we have a dalet and a vav and a dot in the middle. That's an U sound, bidu, and another dalet, bidud. So that means, happened to mean insulation. But you don't have to remember that. It's just a, a way of learning how to read. Bidud. OK. So this is the letter. Um, we, we did the letter tet and uh, the letter yud, which I forgot to put in the box, which is very important because it's a small letter. And it fills very small space inside that little universe that we created. So you can see how small the letter is compare, in comparison to other letters. The Aleph, the Bet, the Dalet, the He, the Het, the Tet, all of these letters, takes, they expand and they take most of the space in that universe. But the Yud is a small letter. It takes just a little bit of space at the top. 
And it's important to remember that because the shape of the yud graphically is very similar to many letters. It's similar, let me show you here, on the string of letters. The shape of the yud is similar to um, the vav. If you make the yud a little too long, it can be mistaken to a vav. Um, the yud is also very much like the resh, because if you make the yud a little bit too long at the, at the top and too long on the bottom, you will get a resh. So you have to remember to do the letters correctly just as they are in the square in that universe. If the yud is a small letter, it will only catch a little bit of space. Thank you for joining us in learning something about reading and writing Hebrew today. I hope that this program will motivate you to continue in your quest for more knowledge and understanding of God's Word. I would like to invite you to visit our website at www.musicfromgod.com music to explore some of our products and Hebrew learning aids. Make sure to order the Aleph Bet book and CD that will complement the teachings you are watching on this station and help you practice and understanding better. Learning Hebrew is fun and rewarding. Come visit us at our website, www.musicfromgod.com, musicfromgod.com, or call us at 602 48